And Job's friends said, we can't see sin in your life, Job, but it's there for sure because bad things have happened to you. And that was an accusation, not only against Job, but it was an accusation against Job's God. And Christian, by way of application, you can have a right relationship with God and you can know that you have a right relationship with God. You don't have to go to your life and, and wonder, God, are things right? By the way, Job didn't just say, I've got a right relationship with God. Job said, in answer to Bildad, he said, can a man justify himself? His answer was, can a man justify himself? Can a man pronounce himself righteous before God Almighty? What's the answer to the question? Can a man? The answer is no. A man can say, I'm righteous, but he can't determine that. And friend, I want to say to you, if you think that you can do good works or you can be a good person or you can do good things and justify yourself before God Almighty, you understand justification just as well as Bildad did, and that is not at all. Job understood that his righteousness was found in the person of Jesus Christ. You say, did he know about Jesus Christ? My friend, he looked forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. He believed in God and he believed in God's promise of a, of a Savior, a Messiah. And the Scripture teaches his faith was counted to him for righteousness. Job was not justified because he was able to say to his friends there's no sin in him. Job was justified because his God said there was no sin in him. Do you see the difference? He was justified because of God and not because of man. And this week we're going to read from chapter 11. We're just going to read down to verse 7. We're going to look at Zophar's accusation, which is very similar. And we're going to learn some more about the character of God. Job chapter 11 and verse 1. Here's Zophar's answer. Then answered Zophar the Namathite and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? In other words, you guys going to let just, just let Job babble on and on and on and give a defense for himself? Somebody has got to show him that he's wrong. He said, Should not a multitude uh, of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Again, he's going back to the same thing that Bildad said. Should a man full of talk be justified? Now, Namathites should, the question is, the question he's answered is demanding the answer. We understand that uh, that uh, that uh, Zophar's answer, from his perspective, was no, he shouldn't be. No, Job, you're wrong. You're a sinner, and you can offer these great defenses, but we know there's something somewhere, and somebody has got to show Job that he's wrong. And he goes on to say in verse three, "Should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed?" So now he's calling Job a liar. He's saying, Job, you are a liar. Now, friend, let me ask you a question. To establish that someone has lied, what do you have to do? What? You have to prove it, right? How do you prove a lie? You have to have evidence. You cannot call someone a liar without evidence that they've lied. In other words, here's a lie, and the reason is because this is the truth, and this is what you've said or what you have done which contradicts truth. And Zophar says, Job, you're a liar. Can you imagine calling somebody a liar and you don't even have the case or the argument? There's, here is Zophar, and he's saying, Job, I know you're a liar, and the reason I know you're a liar is because of the circumstantial evidence. Parents, have you ever thought your kids lied? You ever thought they lied and actually found out that they didn't? Mm -hmm. But it seemed like the evidence was overwhelming. Absolutely. Boy, I know what that's like, don't you? Well, I mean, you, you just knew... They're busted. I got them. And I don't know why they're sticking to this story. Uh, leave it to Beaver. Uh, when Beaver parents asked him, is that the story you're going to stick to? He said, it's the only one I've got. And uh, <laughs> this is, he says, you got to stick to it. It's the only one I've got. You know, he didn't have another story to stick to because he was telling the truth. His parents said, I don't believe you. Is that, is that your final answer? And it's, it's got to be. I don't have another answer. And that's Job's answer. Job's answer is, well, you know what? If I knew what my sin was, I'd be perfectly happy to confess it to you and to confess it to God and be justified by the righteousness of God instead of man's righteousness. But the problem is, is that I don't know what my sin is. I don't have one. Have you? And it's kind of like going to confession in some religions. You know, um, it's not to pick on the Roman Catholicism, but every person I've ever met that has grown up in the Roman Catholic Church, there, I'm sure there's exceptions. Don't tell me, you know, Pastor, that's not true of me. It might be not be true of you, but every person who ever grew up in the Roman Catholic Church that I've ever talked to went to confessions and made up sins. Now, they had plenty of sins they could have confessed, but they didn't want the priest or God to know about those sins. Well, they knew God knew. So they just made up sins. They went to confession and... Um, 
I, I think it was Brother Lopez told me that when he was a kid and he used to go to the Catholic Church, he said, I knew it wasn't true. He said, my friends and I used to make up lists and we would share them. you come out and here you go. And uh, you know, give a cheat sheet of lists, of sins that they could confess. And I think it would have been interesting to be Brother Lopez's, uh, you know, his, the person that he confessed his sins to because his friend would have come in and confessed in the same order. And then he would have come in and confessed them in the same order. And the priest had to know they were making it up. And he had to know he was making up the fact that, or the, making up the lie that he could be a go-between between between God and man before. My friend, we have one high priest that is able to go between us and God, and that is Jesus Christ the righteous by whom we are able to boldly go into the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Jesus is the only way for salvation. John 14, 6, He says He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And Job's friends were trying to play the go-between between, between Job and God. And they were trying to do God's job, which is the condemning job. And they were trying to do God's job, which was the determining guilt and forcing guilt on someone. My friend, be glad for guilt when it comes from God. You know what guilt does? Guilt leads you to getting right. Guilt leads you to confession. And confession uh, leads you uh, to, to getting things right. You deal with, uh, with your sin and, and, and God, God gives you guilt. Don't be upset about guilt. Guilt's a good thing. You feel guilty? It's because there's something that needs to be taken care of in your life. You go ahead and confess it. And, and uh, biblically speaking, God will remove your guilt. He will. Now, uh, so Job's friends are trying to accuse him now in verse 4. He says, Zophar says, For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. And Zophar is getting desperate. He says, But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee. Zophar says, I wish God would help us out here and show you where you're wrong. He says, And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty under perfection? And Zophar says to Job, he says, Job, the terrible judgment that you're facing right now is less than you deserve. The terrible judgment, the times that you're going through right now are less than you deserve. I wish God would expose your sin and really judge you. That's a bold statement, isn't it? Let's go to God in prayer and let's ask for Him to give us discernment as we see the biblical answer to the accusations made by somebody who didn't know Job's heart or the heart of God. Heavenly Father, help us to discern truth. And God, help us to be careful as we search for sin. Lord, help us not to try to be You. God, help us to come to an understanding today that we don't ever need to play the role of God with regards to searching hearts. Lord, it is our job to proclaim the gospel, to preach truth, to hold to the word of God, and God not to swerve from it. But it is not our job to search hearts. And I ask you to show us this truth today, and then help us to understand the accusation of Job. God, may it be true that what was true of Job would be true of each of us in our lives. Now, we wouldn't have a spirit of a Zophar or a Bildad or an Eliphaz, but we would have your spirit. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, Zophar asked asked the question, and the, the question was, God, would you help expose Job's sin so that we can prove to him that he deserves what's happening to him? By the way, did Job deserve what was happening to him? He never said he didn't. Do you ever find Job saying, God, I don't deserve this? Job said, Naked came I from the mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job says, God, I don't deserve anything. You know, when you feel like you deserve something or you don't deserve something, it's because of a sense of entitlement. In other words, you feel as though you have the right to it. For instance, if... Uh